Welcome to this edition of For the Quantum Grammar Shoot Podcast, the only podcast of its kind on the interwebs, as far as I know. I'm your host, Cole Jason Knife and Matthew Cohen Glass. You may call me Jason. And if you didn't already know, this is a podcast of opinion. What I do during the podcast is I will pick a topic or several topics and I will discuss the topics as viewed through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, i.e. quantum grammar, wonderful grammar technology brought to the public by Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller. It's basically a psychology podcast in that it's, it's the manner of thinking that directs the vessel in how the vessel observes what we will call external data. And this particular episode is going to be fun for me because I've chosen to talk about some conspiracy theories and also current events, which the two are kind of intertwined. If you... uh, Well, if you've been paying attention for the past few years to current events or what we perceive as current events, you will see that what people once thought were conspiracy theories have come true. They've come to pass. At one time, people were saying, oh, you're crazy. That would never happen. And then guess what? It does happen. And I'm going to go all the way from current events to the Bible and back again all these things that people I think a lot of people take for granted there is a conspiracy theory out there for you tailor made for you not all conspiracy theories are for all people it all depends what vibes with you right what resonates with you if it goes along with what you believe then you're going to agree with it or be open to it if it goes against your belief systems then of course you're going to discard it you're going to discredit it you know that's just how it goes most times now here's the thing that i've been saying for since the beginning since i've gone out into the public and began teaching correct sentence structure five or so years ago the bible Uh, The Koran, well, let's put it this way. Monotheism as a whole, in general, from my position, is the single most successful psychological operation ever perpetrated upon mankind. And I say that simply because if you can get someone else to believe in something without any proof, without any certification, without any confirmation or validation, without any concrete evidence, if you can get them to believe in something, a concept, then you can pretty much get them to believe anything or do anything in the name of that concept. Here comes the God concept. Get people to believe in that, that there's an all-powerful being get people scared what are most people scared of the most in life which is kind of a dichotomy in and of itself most people are scared of death death is a part of life you don't get life without death it comes with the it comes with the program most people are afraid of it and if you're a group of people, one person, two people, dozen people, a hundred people, whatever, group of people, you got some money, you want to influence people, you want to control people, you want to get more wealthy, you want to have good things for your families, you want to ensure that your family, you want to ensure the wealth and wellness of your family down through the generations, you want to get control of people. You want to direct them, get them to do what you want them to do in your program. What do you do? Well, you can create a whole entire religion. 
You can get people to believe in an all-powerful entity, an all-powerful male entity. You write a book about it. Even though you wrote the book, you say that it was God who wrote the book. It's God's word. Well, didn't a man write down the, you know, use a pen and write it? Yeah, but God was channeling through the man. And then you can do various things to get people to believe this. Um, predict a thunderstorm, maybe, and say it was God's will, or something bad happens to somebody else. He says, well, it was God's will. If you'd have done what I told you to do, God wouldn't have done that. So on and so forth. You go on down the line, and then you say, well, you know, if you want to have a good life in the afterlife after you die, and, and you want to go to heaven and all that stuff, well, you got to pay your penance here. You got to pay ahead of time. It's like buying an airline ticket, right? The prices are all arbitrary, but you got to pay. So then they got people to agree to pay money to church, which is like the wealthiest, one of the wealthiest businesses in the world are churches. People just give their money up because they think they're going to get a good seat when they die with their male God up there. They're all loving God. Uh, but of course, you know, he loves you so much that if you break his commandments, he will burn you for eternity, torture you for eternity. But he loves you, right? I'm kind of going over the top with this to make a point that you get people to believe that, then you can get people to commit atrocities in the name of that. Whereas if you're a Christian... And the rule, your rulers, your elites that control you, the ones that control the narrative, the, the priests that run the, the churches and the Jesuits or whatever you want to call them, the military arm of the Vatican, however you want to say it, they want you, the people, to be on their side so they convince you to believe in this concept as a fact. And really, there's no certification of it. And then they tell you that God wills that Christianity be the religion of the land and that you can give everyone a chance to convert. You can tell these Muslims and these Buddhists and these Hindus or whoever, say, I'll give you a choice. You have freedom of will. You know, you, you can choose to be a Christian. But if you refuse God, if you refuse Christianity... We're going to kill you. (laughs) It's your choice. Contract is by choice. And so by fear and coercion, Christianity spread. And same, I'm just using Christianity. I'm not picking on Christianity because Islam does the same thing. Violent wars throughout history between Christians, uh, Muslims, Jews, Because at their core, each religion, of course, is, you know, participates with protagonist centered morality, and they think only their God is the true God, your God is a piece of poo, and so you gotta die. There you go. So once you get people to believe in that, then you can get them people to kill for that. I'm pretty sure the military does something similar to this very day, especially with those individuals who participate with a religious belief in the military. I mean, how do you rectify the thou shalt not kill, the mortal sin, the Ten Commandments? You know, if you commit a a mortal sin, if you break one of the Ten Commandments, doesn't matter which one, you're going to burn in hell for eternity. You're done. Story over. Well, how do you rectify that if you're in the military and it's your job to kill? You're trained to kill. That's Your whole purpose is to learn how to kill so that you can, quote-unquote, defend your country. Or another way to put it would be uh, you're trained to kill to defend the interests of the corporation you serve. So... There you have it. Protagonist center morality, patriotism, all of these things feed off of this authoritarian construct. 
people buy into it and believe it. And the funny thing about this, and this is funny to me, I follow a lot of uh, military people on social media and also former military people on social media. And the former militaries will always joke about how you can't trust the government. Don't trust the government. You can't trust the military. You don't know what they, you know, what they've had to swear to secrecy or not. Um, they've been told it's in history. Repeatedly, governments and militaries have lied to the people. Just flat out lied. Or withheld evidence. Withheld things. This is a fact. We know this. And these former military people that I follow on social media, they say as much. You can't trust the government. And in the same breath, they swear their patriotism, that they're loyal to their government, they're loyal to their military, even though they're being lied to. And they admit to lying for the government. How does that even make any sense? How can you claim to be a man or a woman of honor when it's okay to lie about something, right? If your God, your government, tells you it's okay to lie, then it's okay to lie. It's okay to spread misinformation. There are whole freaking departments of social media, of military branches, that do nothing but go on social media and post misinformation or misdirection to purposely try to get people to think a certain way or to influence this type of public opinion or that type of public opinion. Happens all the time. And yet these former military people who warn you against those things at the same time are still loyal to the individuals who perpetrate that kind of thing. I hope that made sense. I mean, I hope it made sense in a conceptual sense, but it doesn't make sense in a logical way because... If you claim to be honorable, then you would not participate with any of that. That would be off the table, be out of the question. Um, for real, it would be. Why would you lie to your own people? So fast forward to today, you know, these current events that have been happening with uh, whatever Chinese spy balloons and UFOs being shot down and all these things. Now, all of a sudden, people are choosing to believe what the government is releasing as information now. Yeah, that balloon was from China. And yeah, we did shoot it down. Or yeah, the, the military did see a UFO over uh, Lake Michigan, and they shot it down. It was an unidentified flying object. So now people are believing that. Oh, that, that, they're talking about it as if it is something that actually happened. So now they trust the government to tell them the truth about this stuff. When just a short while ago, they didn't trust the government to tell the truth about anything. That's called cherry picking, folks. That is a logical fallacy. You can't cherry pick if you're to be considered a rational, logical individual. But then again, you know, most people who are patriotic and believe in religions, would you really call them rational, logical people? Think about it. I'm not just picking on anybody at all because I used to have those beliefs myself. I went to Catholic school for a number of years. I've read the Bible multiple times. I've studied religion. I was a Christian at one time. I was born Catholic. Well, not by choice. Uh, and then Christian. And then I almost... Uh, converted to Islam a long time ago. Then logic stepped in and I learned the trivium method and I began thinking in a new way to where death no longer held any type of hold over me. And once I realized once I had the realizations that, that, I, that I had, then religion and believing in some kind of higher power no longer had a hold on me, and it sounded just ridiculously ludicrous 
why would man need a concept like that? It's sort of like the same people that believe in the Ashtar Galactic Federation or whatever, or that the elite are 10 foot tall alligators walking around that eat people or little gray aliens. I mean, you don't hear anything about little gray aliens anymore, do you? I mean, when Whitley Strieber's uh, communion book came out in the, what was it, late 70s, early 80s, all of a sudden the little grays were running around everywhere all the time. Home invasions, these little gray things. They, they had like reports of What's the name of that base in New Mexico? Dulce, New Mexico, where there were big vats of, of plasma in human arms and legs. And then the, the little gray aliens would jump in the tanks and absorb the nutrients of the human beings, the plasma and the blood through their skin. All kinds of stuff like stories like that. Then all, the, all that vanished. Now all of a sudden you don't really hear about them anymore. Why is that? What's the new thing? What's the next thing? And things go very fast nowadays because of social media. Before social media, trends and things like that took a lot longer to implement. They lasted a lot longer and they took a lot longer to fade. Now it's just like here today. I mean, here this minute, gone later this minute, the same minute, 60 seconds, boom, 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 gone. And so it's a constant bombardment of information, of data. Raw data, whether it's true or not true, who's to say? But it is raw data. And that's why I suggest the trivium method for those rational people out there who want to look at things and have evidence for what they participate with as facts, to be able to separate the facts from the possibilities, from the probabilities, so on and so forth. Can I say that aliens exist or don't exist? No, I can't. Why? I've never met one that I know of, never seen one, never witnessed one. I can't really speak on it. I have no idea. Right? Same thing with demons or ghosts or Satan or God or any of these things. I only know what I can certify as facts. That is the number one reason why I suggest to those of you out there who are thinking about learning correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, make yourself a list of terms and conditions that you would use to certify what a fact is. Make a list that you can check. So if you look at a motorcycle, you say, well, does it fulfill these terms and conditions for what I consider to be a fact? You know, can I hear it? Yeah. Can I see it? Yeah. Can I touch it? Yeah. Can I feel it? Is there a sensation to it? Yeah. Um, so on and so forth. Just, just, just check marks, a list, and then apply that to ghost. If you believe in, you think ghosts are a fact, well, do ghosts fulfill that same list? Let's go back to the list for the motorcycle. Can other people see it? Yeah. Can other people ride it? Yeah. Can other people feel it? Yeah. Okay. Now transpose that over to ghost. Can other people see this ghost? Can other people feel it? Sense it? You see what I'm saying? And then you have to apply this list of terms and conditions to all the concepts that you may or may not consider to be facts. And then you can weed out what is a fact and what is not a fact. And then you can brutally, be brutally honest with yourself, sit down and say, okay, this is a fact. This is not a fact. I am choosing to participate with this opinion as a fact. Why? Because it's just the way I was raised? Because everybody else believes it? I really don't care what everybody else believes. I found that out long ago. I mean... Just because everybody on my block believes that, I don't know, that 
believes that hell is in the center of the earth doesn't mean that hell is in the center of the earth. Doesn't mean that there's a hell. I could give two craps about what other people believe as long as it's not infringing upon you know, my biosphere or causing danger to me in any which way, shape, or form. So that's how I look at you know, all the news about balloons and UFOs. I mean, what's the point? Could it be true? Yeah, sure, it could be true. It might be a lie. Well, there's a pretty good possibility that it is a lie or probability that anything the government says is a lie because they are liars. This is proven. Um, the thing that I pay attention to is the stuff that doesn't really make it into the news too much. You don't really hear too much about it. Not too much attention is paid to it. And that is, that is all the chemical spills that are suddenly occurring in, the North, in North America. The irreversible poisoning of Earth through these man-made chemical spills. Now, I can't say whether it's purposeful or not, but what I can say is these chemicals are harmful and that the mainstream media is not really addressing this. It's being covered up, basically. A very small number of entities filter the news that you see or hear in the mainstream media. You can go back and watch news programs from the 60s and 70s and you will see a marked difference between then and now. Not only in professionalism, but in the presentation, the way they articulate things. Nowadays, especially with like, you know, I haven't watched it in a very long time. But it, like when I used to watch Fox News years ago, they considered Fox News to be, oh, you know, it's, it's fresh and cutting edge. And when really what they were describing is people were less educated in their presentation, more rude and accusatory, asking leading questions, inflammatory questions when they would interview people. Whereas back in the 60s and 70s, it actually was... There, there actually was a modicum of etiquette. And the journalism was astounding. Non-biased journalism. Not asking leading questions, not asking accusatory questions. Not trying to put someone on the spot and try and make them look stupid, which is basically just about any interview out there, especially to do with politics. Um, they try to trip people up and make them look stupid. Sort of like giving a deposition in a, in a fiction court, <laughs> which is one of the most ridiculous things I've ever witnessed. It's just a liar trying to trip up someone, trying to get someone to mix their words up or, or contradict themselves. Or It's all a word game. Same thing with mainstream media, with what they present to the public. There is no journalism anymore. Reporters are reporters, no port. There is no port. There's nothing, and it's an opinion. And they don't really know how to speak. Uh, they don't really have any form of etiquette in their speech when they're reporting. They use slang. Uh, it just shows how the education system has just been on a downslide. So what's the budget, the government budget for the education system compared to the government budget for the military or for the pharmaceutical industry? Hmm? Compare and contrast. And then compare and contrast those numbers with the numbers from other countries. And you will see exactly why, hypothetically, a balloon from China would be able to sail over the whole ass United States doing whatever it wants to do until finally being popped. <laughs> if that did happen. I, I don't know if it did or it didn't. Same as you, I just know what I read. The difference is I look at it at a slightly through a slightly different lens. Like a few years ago there was these there were these people called QAnon. 
and all the MAGA people, the where we go, when we go, all people, the patriots, the sons of the American revolution, revolution, no volition. They were all up in arms and saying, oh, we're getting a Q drop. And this was supposedly um, valuable intel and stuff. Well, here's the thing. Where does it come from? Where does it come from? An anonymous source. It's always anonymous. I have high-level security clearance. I'm, I'm going to interview a guy with a high-level security clearance, but I can't show you his face, and I got to disguise his voice. But you're supposed to believe what he says. Turns out, 99.9% of all that stuff was not true. And from what I saw, there's no way to certify any of it. I mean, and that, that name, that title that some people give themselves, the son of the American Revolution, what does that even mean? American Revolution of what? The revolution that was built on the genocide of an entire race of natives? Is that the revolution we're talking about here? Come on, people. This whole system, the whole system, legal system, political system, the whole thing was built on a negative condition of state, was built on the destruction of an entire race of people. And you expect anything to good to come of it? You think we're headed toward a positive performance outcome here? Participating with the very same system that perpetrated all of these atrocities all over the earth in the name of freedom? Come on, bro. I know that there are those of you out there who are hearing what I'm saying and cognizing it. And hopefully it will galvanize you to pull yourself out of this participation in belief systems. And start participating with the facts. Take authority over your own construct. Become autonomous. Learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar for yourself. Learn those flag mechanics, grammar mechanics, postal mechanics, banking mechanics, judge mechanics, all those things. Learn those things so that you can have your own biosphere, your own construct that is your jurisdiction. And no one can infringe upon that because you know what it is you're doing. Authority comes from knowledge. What is authority? Authority just means authorship. You are the author. Because you know what you're doing. And of course, you can check out my YouTube channel. Got around 500 grammar videos free to the public. I've invested thousands of hours in publishing these over the last five years. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Or you can get serious about it. You can invest in yourself. What you put in is what you get out. Contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a correct grammar workshop and fast track your learning and get closure on this grammar so that you too can become autonomous and the authority of your own construct. You don't need anyone else's thumbprint or autograph, but yours, because you're the boss. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll catch you next time.